There's a passage where the Buddha says you should count yourself lucky that you're following this path. Because there are beings that have too much suffering, so much suffering that they can't. And there are other beings that have so much pleasure that they can't. They're too carried away with their pleasure, enjoying it too much, taking the pleasure as an end in and of itself. And it gets in the way of their practice. So think about that when things don't seem to be going well. Remind yourself that you haven't reached the point where you're suffering too much to practice. And you're fortunate that you don't have so much pleasure that you can't practice. You're in a good spot. As long as you have the will to practice, the desire to practice, you're in the right spot. As for what's coming up in the present moment, look at that as raw material. For you to shape the present moment out of a good present moment, as good a present moment as you can given the material you've got. It's like being a good cook. A good cook isn't someone who demands only the best ingredients. A good cook is somebody who can walk into the kitchen, open the fridge, see what's in there, and make something good out of whatever is there in the fridge, whatever is there in the pantry. So look what you've got. You've got the body sitting here breathing. You've got the mind thinking and aware. That's plenty right there. Think about the breath. Be aware of the breath. And do what you can to make that thinking and that awareness as continuous as possible. When they're continuous, the thinking turns into mindfulness. In other words, you keep reminding yourself to stay with the breath. And the awareness turns into alertness. You see what the breath is doing, you see what you're doing with the breath. Because you can fashion it. It's not that you're not allowed to change your breathing. If you're not consciously changing the breathing, then all the adjustments of the breathing become subconscious, where you can't see them. So take your desire for happiness, or take your desire for immediate happiness, and focus it right here. We talk about the path having a goal. It doesn't save all of its good things for the end. As the Buddha said, the path is good in the beginning, good in the middle, good in the end. And that means given your physical condition, given the state of your mind, work with it to make it as comfortable as possible, as pleasant as possible. The more pleasant the breath in the present moment, the easier it is to stay here. And when it's easier to stay here, then your mindfulness and alertness can become more and more consistent. And as for what's going to happen with the next breath or what you've been doing with the past breath, don't worry about it. Focus on this one. Give yourself totally to this project right here. This is looking at what you've got right here, right now, making the best use of it. <clears throat> One of the Buddha's most radical insights is seeing how much our experience of the world is simply fabricated. It's all activities. Even these five khandhas, these aggregates. The word aggregate makes it sound like pieces of rock, but they're not. They may be as heavy as rock, but they're actually activities. Everything is a means to something else. And that something else that it's a means to, that becomes a means, as long as it's fabricated too. The only thing that can stand is a really admirable goal. A real end in itself is nirvana. Everything else should be regarded as a means. So when there's pain, look at it as a means something you can work with, whether it's physical pain or mental pain. Same for pleasure. When there's pleasure, look at it as a means. Once the breath starts getting comfortable, be careful not to wallow in the comfort. Stay with the breath. And then think of the sense of ease spreading throughout the body. 
through all the energy channels in the body. The head, the shoulders, the chest, the abdomen, the back, down the legs, out to the tips of the toes, down the shoulders, down the arms, to the tips of the fingers. Allow that sense of well-being to spread. As for the uncomfortable sensations, you don't have to focus on them. Think of the breath spreading through them and seeping through them, softening them up. In other words, work with whatever good you've got. Try always to be coming from a position of strength, because we all have our strengths. We all have our good aspects here in the present moment. It's learning to focus on those and to make the most of those that makes it easier and easier to stay here, to develop stronger powers of concentration, to develop the path. When obstacles come up, one, learn how to recognize them as obstacles. All too often we, we tend to identify with them. This is the real me. This is how I really think about things. Well, again, if everything is fabricated, the question is, what is the real you in there? It's one of the feelings coming up in the present moment that you happen to focus on. We're not asking you to deny its presence, but also to realize that there's the presence of other things in the present moment as well, things that may be more useful to focus on, more worthwhile to cultivate, that can act as means to better things. This is why the Buddha has us think of our sense of self in terms of aggregates, activities. There's nothing solid really in there. So the question is, what are you going to do with these activities? Learn how to direct them, learn how to channel them in the right direction. And that way you don't get weighed down with your, with your sense of who you are, or whether you're a competent meditator or an incompetent meditator, or a good monk or a bad monk, or a good lay meditator or a good bad, good bad lay meditator. Because then those thoughts are activities. Those images of yourself are activities. You can ask yourself, is that a good activity to follow through with? Think of it as a tune. Is it a good tune you want to sing along with, or are there other tunes in the present moment you can sing along with? You've got your choice. Because who you are, what you identify with, is really not a unitary thing. There's lots of things going on in there. Lots of voices in the mind, lots of sensations in the body. And you have your choice, which are the voices you want to encourage, which sensations can you work with. That will lead you in the direction you want to go. And as you get more and more familiar with the present moment, more and more familiar with principle, cause and effect, what kind of results different activities have in the present moment, you find yourself gaining a wider and wider range of raw materials that you can work with. You can work with pleasure. You can work with pain. You can work with happiness. You can work with discouragement. Because these aggregates you've got here, they're, they've got lots of different potentials. They've got the potential, if you grab onto them and identify with them as yourself, they have the potential to weigh you down. If you identify them as potential elements in the path, you can work with them. They can take you where you want to go. And pain is part of the first noble truth. Pleasure that comes from a concentrated mind, that's part of the fourth noble truth. 
other kinds of pleasure, you've got to watch out for them because they can, they can lead to the second noble truth, which of course leads to more of the first noble truth. But it's all there in the noble truths. If you learn to look at them in the right way, you can work with them in a productive way. So regardless of what raw material your past karma keeps throwing up in the present moment, as long as you're not in the hell of totally unpleasant sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, ideas, and as long as you're not in the, the heaven of totally pleasant sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, and ideas, you're in a good position to practice. And don't think of how long you've been on the path and how long you're going to have to be on the path. It's a good thing to be on the path. Some people get discouraged thinking about the goal at the end of the path. And the way to deal with that is not to stop having goals. It means learning to have a more mature attitude about being on the path, learning how to enjoy the path. Remembering what life would be like if you didn't have this path, and how lucky you are that you have this opportunity to practice it. So keep the goal in mind. After all, if we didn't have a purpose in being here, why would we be here? There are a lot of other places we could be right now, a lot of other things we could be doing. We're here with a purpose, but if you have a, the right attitude towards that purpose, then it's easy to stick with it, no matter what gets thrown up in the present moment. So the pain doesn't derail you, the pleasure doesn't derail you. And whatever ever comes up can be raw material for the path.